so you can interrupt and ask any questions. Um, you know, just raise your hand either or, you know, put something in the chat. Like we'll be monitoring the chat um, the whole time as well. So, and, you know, keep it a friendly atmosphere as well. There's no such thing as a silly question. Um, so, yeah, anything that you want to know, just, um, just let us know. Um, obviously, this is just, you know, the mandatory disclaimer. Um, don't use this to treat your patients. Have a chat with the team that's looking after the, after the patients as well. So the day will be divided into the medical viva uh, and then Lahira and I will viva each other, sort of recreating my two main vivas from the day um, and go through some of the, it's it's sort of more to learn how to, you know, frame your answers in a med viva than to revise content. Um, and then we'll go into ECG and so then we'll have some breaks in between. So basic assumption, which, you know, comes from SIM. Um, you know, we believe that everyone participating in the in the boot camp is intelligent, capable, cares about doing their best and wants to improve. Um, so we're using that framework today. Going into the MedViva. Um, so the purpose of your MedViva really is to determine the severity and the stability of the patient's disease, uh, as well as the complications of the disease, the treatment that they're undergoing for that disease and the, and the complications of their treatment as well is something really important to consider. You then need to determine whether the patient is optimised um, and have a discussion usually around how to optimise that patient from a multidisciplinary perspective. Given all of that, um, they'll be asked to risk stratify the patient um, based on their disease and the procedure that, uh, that is proposed and plan their perioperative progress accordingly. Sometimes you don't get to that um, sort of step depending upon how complex uh, the patient's diseases and how many investigations you need to go through. Um, there's usually a, a component as well of consent or shared decision making and consideration of whether the patient um, or whether the procedure should go ahead. So you get an opening stem. It's typically a multidisciplinary um, or multi-system rather disease, or you may get an isolated cardiac or respiratory disease. So sort of one of the two. Rheumatology is really, really common, um, but so, so is um, cardiovascular or respiratory disease. You'll be told what the planned procedure or the planned surgery is, and you're usually seeing the patient in pack. Um, so you have some sort of uh, time between uh, reviewing the patient and when the proposed procedure is to consider those optimization steps. You'll be asked to know what you want to know on history, look for on um, examination and what investigations you want to see. And in my vivas, um, when, when, I, when I said what investigations I wanted to see, they would then say, okay, we've got an ECG for you as you asked for, what do you expect to see on the ECG? And then they would show you the ECG. Okay, we've got those pulmonary function tests you asked for, what do you expect to see? And then they show you and you need to interpret it. So we want to get what I want you to get out of this. So a high yield general history. So rehearse the steps that you need to go through for a history of a patient with a multi-system disease under the time constraints of a viva. You know, there's a lot to get through. How do you structure that? Have a look at the common uh, conditions um, and how to elicit um, high yield symptoms and signs. So that's, you know, as a component of your history, but also what you'd be looking for on examination. The validated Ranking, uh, rankings, I think, are really high yields, you know, NYHA um, as a as a heart, for a heart history um, and then focused examination as well, as well as some practice interpreting investigations. So what common conditions um, have people heard for, uh, have you people heard about, you know, being brought up in previous med vivas? Rheumatoid, sarcoid. Yep. Anything else? Diabetes. Yeah. Or heart detection. So, yeah. So, yeah, there's kind of multi systems um, things or, you know, cardiac and respiratory focused. Um, this is just a little list um, of things that I've noticed tend to come up. Um, so, I'm now going to ask how do you structure your history taking when you're asked um, to take a history of a patient with a multi system disease? Uh, so, I guess. General things would be, you know, uh, the duration of the diagnosis, um, how it was established or the nature of the presentation of the initial diagnosis, um, the severity of their diagnosis, the stability of their management and the nature of their treatments, uh, any complications of the condition or complications of the treatment. Um, and then I guess more specific things depending on the condition. Yeah, that's awesome. 
Um, so this is just how I decide, like, and my structure is very similar to yours, Mason. Um, this is just how I decided to structure my history. Um, there was this great fellow at the Mercy where I was where I was working at the time of um, my vivas who, you know, really sort of grilled me that the medical viva was important um, and that history taking was important as well. So I came up with this in response to that. So exactly as you said, Mason, the time of diagnosis, the cause of the disease I think is relatively um, important to pick up as well. We'll be... Um, that will apply to some conditions differently. So, for example, if the patient has a cardiomyopathy, you may want to know if that's congenital or acquired and then go down that further. But if it's, you know, diabetes, um, you know, it's probably going to be the type 1 or type 2 unless it's a weird variant. So the symptoms at diagnosis and the symptoms now will give you an idea of the severity but will also give you an idea of the stability. So in my opinion, if you just said to the examiner, I want to know how stable this disease is, they'll probably come back at you and say, okay, well, that's up to you to determine how are you going to determine that. So I've built some of those things into the history as well. It's good to know if they've had exacerbations or decompensations. Again, it gives you an idea of severity and stability. The complications of the disease, and you can break that down into a systems-based as well. Treatment, so break that down into pharmacological, non-pharmacological, procedural and surgical. Their compliance with treatment, the efficacy of treatment in terms of um, changes in investigations or changes in symptoms or improvement in functional status and the complications of treatment, exactly as Mason, Mason said. Um, you will be asked quite a lot about the patient's function and how you would determine that. Um, on the day, they gave me a couple of six-minute walk tests to interpret and they seem to really like those. Um, DASI questionnaire is also quite useful and we'll come to that um, as well. Then I said something in like in my history, given above, I would apply the grading, the grading scale that is blah, 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 depends on you know, which system you're talking about, and that will give you sort of a um, numerical basis to determine severity. And then a systems review if you've got time and if it's relevant for that patient and advanced care directive as well, um, give you a little bit of an idea of you know, how much you may do in perioperative period. So we'll have a practice. Take about 30 seconds to a minute to write down what you would want to know on history for a patient with COPD. And then if it's okay, I will ask um, what he thinks about this one. So I'm just going to set on timer. Okay, what do you reckon? Yeah. So um, similar to the structure we mentioned before, so I'd be looking at the, the time of the formal diagnosis in this case, um, the etiology uh, of the condition. So looking at, um, say, smoking history or if, or if there's something rare like alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, exacerbations, if it's hospitalizations versus non-hospitalization, so treatment with antibiotics, puffers, um, uh, what the regular regime is and how that's changed over time. Um, the, uh, um, treatment if they if they've uh, required um, O2 if it's a uh, consistent or, or whether it's perhaps uh, at night time um, any PFTs or investigations or um, follow up with a respiratory physician and letters related to that and then other comorbidities so specifically looking at right ventricular failure or pulmonary hypertension and then uh, ending with a functional status so looking at their their ADLs um, what they're able to achieve so a DASI score as well. Yeah, perfect. So you've basically hit all of these things, uh, including the things that I think are, you know, the really important, so the exacerbations and complications. You've gone through the treatment. Um, yeah, totally nailed it. So I tried to keep it, you know, you've only got a really short time. They'll say, what do you want to know on history? So trying to keep it, um, you know, big headings and the and the, um, and the the main things you really want to know. So I think that, that you've, you know, absolutely nailed that. So smoking versus other is just what I said rather than sort of trying to go into a specific, but you're totally right. Symptoms of diagnosis and now I think you've mentioned as well. So, you know, their ADLs, how short of breath they are, coughs, sputum, fatigue, all of those kind of things, exacerbations. I think, yeah, you said really well. Uh, I could you could have potentially added um, number and frequency, and you'd want to know if those were increasing in frequency recently. So to get a bit of an idea of that overall trajectory, but you were right, you know, hospitalizations versus you know home-based treatment. Um, you talked about their treatments as well. You could have added in procedural and surgical if you wanted to be really complete. Um, compliance with treatment and also whether they're smoking now, I think is you know relative um, is important to know in terms of their compliance with you know all of the aspects of treatment. 
Um, and then, yeah, you said, top, you know, six-minute walk test, ADLs. Uh, I think the validated ranking scale would be COPD, ABC, um, which include, incorporates the MMRC and CAT scores. I just encourage everyone to look those up if they haven't already. Systems review, you, know, you mentioned comorbidities, advanced care directive. Um, great. Um, we'll go to the next person if that's okay. What would you want to know on history? Now, what's new with ABCs of Anesthesia is that we're forming a whole bunch of very comprehensive courses for every stage of your anesthetic journey, from medical student to procedural skills, from foundations in anesthesia, as well as really important exam lectures and clinical anesthesia courses as well.